Hello, I'm Alex, and in this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create a simple, short fade hairstyle by using hair particles. So this is what we'll be able to create. This is our example, and I'm using Render Engine EV, Blender's native real-time engine, for previewing this hair. So let's get started. So first, let me turn off the example hair. We'll go to the hair settings tab, and I'll simply turn this off so we don't see it. And we'll create a brand new hair particle system by clicking on this plus button. So I'll switch to hair instead of emitter. And you'll see that the hair is way too long. So I'll set the hair length to about 02. And let me set the hair numbers, the emission numbers to about 20 for now. Now you'll notice that currently the hair is spread all over the body, which we'll fix in further steps. Uh, but for now, I'll just go ahead and assign the material to this hair particle system. In the render material settings, I'll switch this to hair. So this material was pre-made, but if you want to learn about hair material setup in Blender, I have another video tutorial, which I'll link in the description. And now we'll give the hair the proper hair thickness. So I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'll give the diameter root and tip about 0.03 to both of these slots. So now you see that the hair is much thinner. And next we'll fix this issue where the body uh, grows, uh, where the hair grows all over the body and we need it to grow only where it's supposed to be grown on the scalp. So to do this we'll use the vertex groups to define where the hair should be located. If we switch to the weight paint mode and I'll go to the vertex groups I have pre-made here in the object data properties. I have also pre-made a few uh, vertex groups and to show you what they are, I'll need to turn off, turn on these overlays. So this one is called Mohawk. This is just an example, uh, which I'll show you later on. And this one is called Hair Scalp Full. And you'll see that the hair will be, uh, the red will define where the hair will grow. And the blue areas will define where the hair stops growing. So we'll use this map to define uh, our scalp area and we'll use another map uh, called hair fade bold to define the length of the hair which I'll show you in the next steps. Also if you don't know how to create these vertex groups I have another video tutorial which covers this topic. So I'll switch back to the object mode and I'll turn off the overlays for now, go back to the particle settings and I'll define the density of the hair growth. I'll set that to scalp full. And now you see that all the hair has relocated to just that scalp area, which we have defined with the vertex group. So now we can go back to the emission settings and slightly increase the emission number to just 40. We'll give the so-called parent uh, hair particles a little bit higher number and um, these so-called parent hairs will serve us as guides as we'll be adding more children hairs to fill out the rest of the scalp. Uh, be careful not to set this number uh, too high otherwise we'll have the, the, the grooming process will be more difficult and instead of dealing with just a few guide curves we'll need to deal with uh, slightly more, uh, which is uh, not productive. Now let's scroll down to the children settings. And for this haircut, we'll use the interpolated method of distributing the children hairs. Uh, this will ensure that the hair is spread evenly throughout the whole scalp. And if you want to learn the difference between what's simple and interpolated, what's the difference between these two, 
I have another video which uh, talks about this topic. I'll leave the link in the description for this video tutorial. So now I'll switch to the particle edit mode and we'll choose my head brush and you'll see that some of the hairs might be a little bit too close like these two hairs here. To get rid of some of uh, these curves I'll hold control and click on this hair particle and then to select the whole hair particle I'll hold control and press letter L for Lucy. Control L will select the whole particle and press delete and delete particle. So I'll get rid of that one and maybe this one was a little bit also too close. Control L, delete particle and the rest look okay. I'll also get rid of this one as well. So now I'll add a few more hair particles to fill out those bold spots. To do this I select the add brush and count I set to one and I can simply start adding them on the scalp. So I'll just fill out the empty spots where the hair is supposed to grow. Add a few here. And later we'll use these hairs to groom uh, the haircut. We'll give it a brush and will define the direction in which the hair will grow. So now that the parent hairs are evenly distributed throughout the skull, I'll switch back to the object mode and I'll set the display amount to about a hundred just to see what our hair looks like now. So if we look at our reference, we'll see that even though this is a short haircut, it still needs some grooming in terms of giving it growth direction. You'll see that the hair is not simply just sticking up like this, but it leans into a certain direction. Uh, like it leans forward here, then on the side it goes this way. It's not simply pointing up. So in the next step, we'll uh, give it direction. So now we can start the grooming process. To do this, we'll switch back to the particle edit mode and I always try to keep the hair curves as simple as possible with the least required segments on each curve. Uh, currently you see that there are about one, two, three, four, five, six segments and I think for this hairstyle it is too much. I will, I will uh, edit these curves to be about four segments for each hair strand. So to do that I'll hit A on the keyboard to select all the hair particles. Then I'll go to particle, rekey. Once again, particle rekey, and I'll use this slider to define the segments. I'll enter four, number of keys. That means there's these four dots, one, two, three, and fourth is the root. And there are three segments to each of these curves. This is to keep each hair particle uh, very simple. That way it's not, uh, it's not going like all over the place and it's easier to manage. So that's how you adjust, uh, how you can rekey the amount of segments on the hair particles. One thing to note here is that you need to select the correct viewing mode. So if you select one of these, you will not be even able to see any of the hair particle keys, so-called uh, keys, uh, these dots and the segments, therefore. So you, you'll need to select, I, all, I usually select this middle one that I can see exactly how many uh, keys I have on each hair particle. And if I just select this one, this will only display uh, the tip of the hair and this will completely uh, disable uh, the viewing properties of uh, each key. So just select this middle one. So now I'm ready to brush the hair and to do that we simply select this comb brush and start brushing the hair in the direction that it usually grows. So we'll start brushing it like so and I usually use the profile view for brushing uh, the hair because if I uh, 
if I let's say start brushing here I you know I cannot tell how far this curve actually goes so I'll usually to brush this area I'll switch to this uh, view and start brushing this way so I'll do it for the rest of the hair I'll quickly speed up the video here uh, so you'll see the whole process All right, so now we're done with the brushing process. I'll go back to the display amount and I'll bump up this number to about 400. Yeah, so we have a lot more hairs uh, that resembles our final haircut. Uh, also, if you plan to make the final render, don't forget to set not only the display amount, but on also in the render uh, settings. Uh, also, don't forget to set the render amount so if the display amount is 400 and the final render should be also 400 otherwise these numbers will not match and you'll be scratching your head trying to figure out why the haircut doesn't look the same so make sure that the display amount and render amount are the same now i'll add some roughness to the hair so it does not look so uniform and i'll also make sure to add some extra ste strength steps so i'll set it to three and uh, this will ensure that uh, the hairs have enough segments and they don't start breaking they might may start looking angular you'll see if i turn this down to one the hair becomes straight that means it doesn't have enough segments and it only goes from point a to point b in a straight line so that's one segment if i give it two segments it start you see curving and you see that there are like three segments now and if I turn to three, you can start seeing that it uh, starts to curve more. So add strand steps in the view viewport display and also don't forget to do the same for the render output. Make sure this is, this is three as well so that the final render uh, has the same amount of strand steps. So then for roughness, we'll need to scroll down further down and for roughness I'll give the uniform roughness you'll see that it will give it like a little bit breakup I'll set this number really low to 0 0.001 it will give it a little bit of breakup and the size will also be fairly low to about 0.1 then I'll skip the endpoint because uh, and I also set random to Let's see. This will be also fairly low amount. Let's uh, give it half this number, so 0 0.05, something like this, just to give it a break up. And uh, let's see the size. Let's uh, give it 0 0.01. This perhaps a bit too much. Okay, let's keep it 0 0.01 for now and just bump up this threshold so this gives an influence of how much the random hairs will will get. So about 30%, if we put 0 0.3, about 30% of the hair will remain sort of uh, straight and the rest of the numbers, um, the rest of the hair will... Finally, I can go back to the vertex groups all the way down here and I will set the length of the hair based on the map that I pre-made for this video, which is hair fade bold. So this is this vertex group defines which parts of the haircut are bold and which one have uh, longer hair. And to give you an example with the mohawk, I can switch to the mohawk vertex group. And you can see that I can switch uh, hairstyle by simply changing this length vertex group and it gives me a completely new hairstyle in a very quick manner. So this is the advantage of uh, creating vertex groups 
if you want to quickly adjust the hairstyle. So let's go back to our haircut by setting the hair fade bold. This is our intended hairstyle. And at this point you can simply uh, continue fine-tuning the hair settings. Uh, perhaps you want to give it uh, more a hair amount. I'll double this amount and set it to 800. And uh, also don't forget to set your render amount as well so you don't get a different result at render time. And uh, perhaps you also could uh, adjust the scale diameter from 0.01 to maybe let's give it 0.01. 5 something like this the hair may look a little bit more natural it's not as thick not too coarse and um, if uh, I pull up the reference again you can see that the hair is uh, looks similar but maybe it's a lot shorter so I can also shorten the length of the hair by going to the length parameter which is here so I can simply turn this down to about 0.6 and that will give me a desired look. So this was a walkthrough on how to create a simple short fade hairstyle. In the next tutorial I'll show you how you can use this hairstyle as a base to develop it in even further into another haircut. So if you have any questions about this tutorial please let me know down in the comments. Also, if you have found this tutorial useful, give it a like. Thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.